Good evening, welcome to the Freetown Board of Selectmen's meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, today is April 17, 2018, the time being 6.05 p.m. Uh, is anybody recording the meeting? Freetown. And the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I did. On the, tonight's agenda, 6 p.m., discussion with Rich Madeira, Superintendent of Schools, regarding school budget and school choice. 6 p.m., discussion with Finance Committee, the following fiscal year 19 budgets, Building Department, Board of Health, Town Clerk, and Treasurer Collector, Library and Cemetery. Weekly public discussion. Consent agenda, discuss fire station one improvements, discuss, Luce discuss with Lucille Rosa, Library Planning Committee Chair, uh, the possible organization of a library foundation, discuss sign amendment to indirect cost allocation plan for water sewer enterprise fund, approve our ambulance abatements for March 2018 as submitted by the fire chief, approve sign reserve fund transfer request for elections as submitted by town clerk Jacqueline Brown, town administrator's report, uh, nothing under the board of health, Personnel Board, accept letter of resignation from Sarah Gilbert, Senior Clerk, Council on Agent, effective April 12, 2018. Accept letter of resignation from Edwin Medeiros, Council on Agent, Board, board Member, effective April 3, 2018. Appoint David DeMarch the, as SERPED Commission Member, effective May 25, 2018. And the new business, dates for upcoming selectmen's meeting. And these are just proposed dates at this point, Monday, May 7th, Monday, May 21st, annual special town <coughs> meeting, Monday, June 24th, uh, June 4th, I'm sorry, Monday, June 18th, Monday, July 2nd, Monday, July 16th, Monday, August 6th, and Monday, August 20th. Dates for upcoming Board of Selectmen meeting to discuss rec Excel Recycling, Monday, April 23rd, possibly Thursday, April 26th, and Monday, April 30th. These will be held at the Freetown Elementary School and then executive session. Um, we have three things on the agenda to talk to the police chief and to discuss union uh, strategies and lastly to discuss litigation with, um, possible litigation with Excel. <coughs> okay. <coughs> First, school department. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This is Mr. Baker, my business manager. I know most of you know Fred. We also have two school committee members present, both Lakeville rep representatives, uh, Sherry Barron and Laura Ramsden. Senior, yeah. um, I'll, I'll try to keep my comments brief. I have provided you an updated uh, uh, public hearing presentation reflective of some new numbers. Um, obviously, I know you're represented on the, the regional FinCom, and uh, at least in my experience, for the first time, we had a recommendation from that group in relation to, and we made some, uh, some pretty significant adjustments. I'd like to highlight those tonight and certainly um, would answer any quick specific questions. Um, I'll try to give the short version, but I'll go into as much detail as you want to hear tonight as well. The total budget increase uh, that's proposed before you tonight on the assessment sheet and the packet there is a 2.2% budget increase. So it's an $830,635 increase. That's a um, pretty significant adjustment from my original budget, which was intended to try to build in some stabilization monies and some E&D uh, based on some, some direction um, from, from FinCom in both towns. I'm certainly representative here tonight, Mr. Jose, can speak to that. We've made an adjustment. The budget you see presented total spending is that 2.2% increase of $38,273,474. It does include, there was a reference to school choice. I really don't have specific comments in relation. There was some discussion in relation to backing out some of that money. That's not the case here, and that was supported by the, the recommendation of the FinCom. So although I'll be happy to answer any questions, it is inclusive of that total dollar amount in the assessment. As you go down to Freetown, we're here tonight to, to discuss, obviously, the town of Freetown. You'll see the total assessment is 621 311 uh, dollars. That's the increase, or a 5.96 increase. So that's a little different. It, it, I, let me rephrase that. It's a lot different than what was originally voted on by the school committee. And so it is our intent at the April 25th meeting to vote to bring this recommended number, which was recommended by the FinCom for that budget. Um, what we've done is we've removed the stabilization amount um, of $250,000. Originally, it was close to it was $500,000, as, as you recall, when you when I presented in January, and um, we split that dollar amount in half and rolled into the assessment 
and thus you see the reduced total budget number that's there. There's no new staffing in it. Uh, it we did have to increase based on, on, on ongoing negotiations, and David's been part of that process. Um, we, we originally had built in a half percent. We increased that to one percent based on the fact that we were a little bit further along in the negotiation process and, and felt that that was a more realistic number. I don't see any significant adjustments being made, but obviously we still have an April 25th school committee meeting where the board needs to take formal action on this. So that's the one piece that I need to make sure that people understand. Um, and certainly I'd be happy to answer any specific questions. We did have initially three articles you'll see in this presentation. Um, only two articles. The, the original three articles talked about a state, the establishment of a stabilization fund, which both towns had to support along with the school committee in a dollar amount. I've removed the, the dollar amount. The school committee still needs to discuss the, the establishment of a stabilization fund, so I can't speak to that. It's not included in my assessment piece for a dollar figure. The board will have to take uh, formal action. When I say the board, the school board on the 25th to determine if they want to proceed as a as a just simply an establishment of the fund. And Bob can speak to you know the, how the regional FinCom felt about that. Um, but the board will need to take action. So the only other article or dollar amount that would be potentially assessed or for consideration for the town of Freetown would be one maintenance vehicle. Uh, and the total dollar amount for the maintenance vehicle is just under sixty thousand dollars combined. Fred has the breakdown of what that what that would be cost yeah, wise the, uh, for Freetown. Split for Freetown is twenty five thousand nine twenty nine, and for Lakeville thirty three thousand five fourteen. So that one dollar is the only dollar amount that's not inclusive in that assessment uh, for consideration. There's a lot of detail, there's some inventory there, and we can speak to that, or I can certainly bring my director of facilities at a later date if necessary. No other capital items are being uh, presented at this time, nor do they. Do we intend to do that for the coming, obviously, June 4th meeting. I'll be happy to speak, Bob, I don't know if you want to speak to regional FinCom. As I said, it's my fourth year here. We have not had a recommend recommendation from that board and I was uh, real pleased to, as to the progress that we made the other night in relation to um, back and forth and certainly from my original numbers I would think both towns are pleased to see where the assessment numbers have come down dramatically in relation to that. Can you just real quick give us the original number that was voted by the school <coughs> committee and then so we can see what the exact, exact adjustment is? Uh, it was basically about uh, the, the, assessment sheet. the last one, you just voted one last meeting, correct? Uh, yeah. Um, I have it. That was the, uh, just beyond the 38, right? You had doubled that up. Yeah, because I, I supposed to be, uh, It was three seven. it was... 375, 350 higher than the number you see there. So this is a reduction by $350,000, uh, $350, roughly. Roughly, yeah. On the Freetown side? No, on both sides. On both sides. On both sides. On both sides. So that was so the, total, the total budget. Yeah. Okay. And on the regional FinCom, we recommended going with this, a form of this budget and keeping school and choice the way it belongs back coming out of the uh, assessment. Um, we fell short of, there was a discussion, somewhat lengthy discussion, whether we should leave in the stabilization. The board was wishy-washy one way or the other. We didn't make a recommendation specifically speaking to that, but I think it was mostly the sentiment of the board to pull the stabilization. But there was no official vote. Um, any questions you have for no. Superintendent? No, now obviously on the 25th of April, it's our next school committee meeting when that formal action is taken. Uh, I'd be surprised. I have two board members here, but certainly both board members that are school board members will be presenting the numbers that you see reflected here. Thank you. Next on the agenda is um, discuss finance committee with the finance committee, which doesn't have an agenda. Building department, board of health, town, town clerk, treasurer collector. Let's bring up. Uh, 
building and building and uh, border help. I'm doing the budget, so um, I had asked. <laughs> um, yeah, basically. So uh, Kim was nice enough to sit down with me and go over it. And, um, basically, level funded. Um, so we all got. Um, me and Kim went over it line by line, and hopefully, I learned for next year exactly what to do. So you had no increase? Uh, just contractual. Just contractual increases. increases. And I had um, longevity for. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Derek? No. No. Okay. <coughs> you had spoke earlier about, or at some point you had asked about changing the job title for your secretary. What is, where is the... Is that something you're pursuing through the union? I think so, yeah. Last okay. I know she had had a couple of discussions with Kevin, and I think she was going through the okay. union. And okay. not least, nothing's included in this budget for that, though, at this point? At this point, yeah. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Uh, not doing here. Okay. Jess, Kathy? you're up. And how is your budget shaping up? Good. Do you have any increases this year? Um, just the salary increases. Um, payroll, I went up $2,500 just because we have to do ACA now. I have no extra increase in that. We can get reporting for that. I have to pay for it. Um, other than that, nothing crazy posted. I went up 4% just because it goes up every year. Just that. Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> so everything, all your increases, basically contractual, except for the postage and the, and the payroll. And the payroll. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. Have Bye. a good night. Jackie, I skipped over you. I'm sorry. You were no, no, that's okay. <coughs> I don't have kids like the board. Okay, what can you do first? Let's we'll stay right with your budget first. All right, I have three budgets. So one, why don't we go with one? I've got 161, 160, 162, and 163. We'll start right with 161. 
Okay, um, as far as salaries, there's a 2% increase for the town clerk. There's an increase on um, the assistant town clerk because that's, she's going to be getting a step increase. Also, she'll be getting longevity this year, which we didn't have in the budget last year. So there's an increase there. The meetings and the seminars went up $100 because she's going to be um, taking some, some classes at some of the conferences. There's $100 extra on office supplies for an increase in supplies. In-state travel, there's $150. And that's because I never put in for a gas mileage. Um, Cheryl's been doing some mentor classes, so she's been putting in for the, um, the gas. My voice is kind of going hoarse here. <coughs> Excuse me. She's been putting in for the mileage and stuff, so... I never had it in for in-travel before, and, and that's why that 150 is in now. And then the dues and membership, as an assistant town clerk, I have to pay for her and the dues in order to attend the conferences and stuff. So that's the increases on those. Okay. Anybody have questions on 161? How about 162? Um, elections. This year we have three elections. Um, there is an increase in the salaries of, of 25 cents an hour for the election workers. Um, this year we have a state and a primary election in there. So what's going to happen is we have to have our early voting again. So that's another big expense that's put in there. But the good news is the state has agreed to um, give us some money back, so we'll see what comes back from them. So the early voting, um, what happens is on that there, if it's going to be the same, they're, they're, it's in the process of maybe having some changes. It's going to only be for the November election. But what's going to happen is for 10 days before the election, I'll have to have the early voting at the town hall again, which means I'll need the assistance of some of the election workers to help out. Um, also, we have to, by law, uh, publicize um, the early voting. And that expense, I'm trying to remember what it was last time. It, the newspapers ended us ch ended up charging me almost like six hundred dollars for for the advertisement. Uh -huh. Well, before they used to just put it in as like a press release and stuff, and now they're not considering it that. So, if we have to do that again, that is in there. Like I said, there might be some changes, but I'm going based on what we had to do the last time. So those were the um, increase. So of course there would be increase in postage for for doing mailings because we have three elections in here and, and supplies also. So it's based on the number of elections we have. So that budget always goes up and down. So you have a primary state and the annual town? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then the early voting is in there too, which... Just for the state though, right? Yep. Any questions on no. 162? And 163. 163 <coughs> is the registrar's. So it's based on elections and stuff, too, because you have your final voter registrations. So there's going to be the final voter registrations for the elections, and then we have it for the town meeting and stuff, too, and then they work at the town meeting. So the increase in the wages is based on, because there's, there's more that they have to work. Um, they also help out with the census and stuff. Um, and then the increase, I think I put in for the supplies. No, I, I stayed with the same amount on the supplies. So basically that was it. And then they would also, I usually do the same for them as I do for the election workers. So there would be a 25% uh, a twenty-five cent increase, the same thing per hour. <coughs> and that's basically it for that. Another question. Uh, have we ever looked into signage? for both sides of town, you know, those uh, large lit signs to rent or purchase to 
advertise these uh, elections? Well, the lodge lit signs on, uh, or again, zoning. Zoning. We, zoning? Yeah, we, we can't have the lodge lit signs for zoning without zoning. If you look at the sign, the sign bylaws, we do have the sign boards at each end of town. We also use the one here, and I believe we display them at the school sign board too when we have for election. No. No. So it's just the two, the two in each end of town, and we have the one from the police station usually. So we always do post. Right. Post. Oh, wait. Um, the, the signs that he's talking about, the town signs, those white signs, oh, the yeah, one near the yeah. gazebo, and then the one at the other end of town. So whenever there's a town meeting or an election, we always put it up on the board. And then we post it, of course, on, on the website, too. Where's the website, social media, Facebook plus those. Right. Yeah. So one of the things, sorry, that we're doing this year is we have a warrant article that's going on. Um, through with also with the chiefs, both chiefs, um, that since the last time we decided that uh, in order to inform people about what's going on, not only town meetings, but anything like um, in case of a hurricane or if there's a warming station opened up here, and the only way to get that message out is we're doing um, a reverse one call. So that would mean that um, we're hoping that we can tie it into the census and put down at the bottom <coughs> Um, how you would like to be informed, whether it be email or a text message. Um, you'd have to sign up every year. There is a cost involved in that. Um, but we think, what is it, Carlton, about $4,000? Yes. So Initially or every year? No, every year it would be a cost. But people would have to sign up every year, so it could be the maximum of $4,000. If not a lot of people sign up, then it wouldn't be. But we'd be able to use that system to inform people of a town meeting, um, or inform them of any other like, major event. Um, we wouldn't want to use it like just because, but we'd want to make sure that we use it for um, certain protocol. So there should be a policy attached to why we're going to use it and when we're going to use it. How far along are we in this? We have to. There's a, going to be a warrant article. So. Oh, for for the four thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. You're talking about warrant articles. And I'd like to suggest that the board of selectmen put one on for that generator too. Remember, we I had asked you about that, so that might be something we could discuss when we're talking about articles. Because I did check with the fire chief, and he doesn't have anything for the town hall. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We'll actually not put a warrant article. We'll probably put it right in the budget under capital equipment. <coughs> so that's good to know. Thank you, Jackie. While we have you here, Jackie, you're right in front of us here. Um, you had requested a uh, reserve fund transfer. Yes. Do you yes. have that? Sure, we'll go. Yep. And what is it? What is it? That's because of the special <coughs> election that we had on March 24th. Um, at the time when the budget was done, of course, we didn't know we were <coughs> going to have that election. Um, so there's a salary. Um, transfer request and then one for um, other purchases, which would be the ballots and the coding for that special election. All right, so you have a dated 49, you have a request amount of $1,880 for election salaries, mm -hmm. um, special town meeting March 24th. That wasn't scheduled and wasn't in your budget. That's a reserve fund transfer for that and a reserve fund transfer for the amount of $1,066.75 for elections, other purchases, and services, ballots and coding for special election held on March 24th. Um, yeah, the, the payroll was actually $2,009, um, but there was uh, some money left in there, so that's the difference. Because but I, you're only, you're only I don't asking have for any transfer. other elections coming up, so I don't need any other okay. money. You're only asking payroll. for the transfer of 1880, correct? Yes. Okay. Make a motion to approve and send to the Finance Committee. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Carries unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Lucille. Hey. Come on up. Switch Hi. seats. Musical chairs. <laughs> Musical chairs. Excuse me. <laughs> How are you tonight? All right. <laughs> Did you ask for an increase? Um, 
Well, the state requires a 1.025% increase, and that's all we ask for. Otherwise, we risk decertification, which I don't think we want to do again. <laughs> right, Lisa? That's right. It's not a big increase. One point zero two five percent. Thank you. You're welcome. Looks like you also have a Lisa cop, a Lisa on the copier. Yes, but that that's included in that budget. I'm just looking at the increases. Oh. That three ninety seven is that state required from the books that I'm talking about, or is it the sixteen hundred? I don't know. All I know is it's one point. 0.25% over what it was last year. And we'll go from 136 to 137. And Kim worked with uh, with Dorothy on it. Okay. She was sorry she couldn't make it tonight, but I figured I could answer basic questions. Any questions? No. Shall I? I'm good. Okay. What's that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, do we have any? Do we have anything on the agenda for library? Oh, library. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna hold that over right. right now. That's okay. And lastly is cemetery. Anybody here from the cemetery? They're all tied up. Yeah. Board. Board. They're at the planning board meeting. Uh, well, can I bring up something again? Can I like to go back to the? Uh, I'd like to stay somewhere on the agenda, though. I don't want to go off too far on a tangent. Okay. Well, it, just going back uh, to the subject, I think, when you talked about the $4,000 for one reverse uh, 911, mm -hmm. whatever it's called, uh, I think for $4,000 or thereabouts, we should be able to do targeted mailings to registered voters, which might be more effective than a quick phone call that you don't know who's going to answer it or how that's going to be received. We can talk about that and when we're talking about the war Yeah, articles. it's not on the agenda, so with, okay. that's not something that's going to be on you. When we start talking about Warren articles and anybody wants to put a Warren, right now the articles are open still, so anybody has a suggestion for a Warren article, that you, you can see them at the, the office. <coughs> but it's, well, I, I, I want to state the agenda, and that's not on the agenda. Yep, right no, that's so. But how, how would you like me to proceed on that, just so I know what process you would like? Proceed on which? On what I was talking about, mailing instead of... Um, if you'd like to get some numbers together, and I know you had suggested doing that as part of your budget in the past, if that's mm -hmm. what you wanted to do, but... Uh, yeah, that would be fine. Just put it in the budget request, and we could proceed with something, we could hear it, and decide where we're gonna, it's going to be, what it... Okay. So, was there? Did you, do we know if there was an increase on cemetery? Or was it level funded? There's a two thousand dollars increase. I don't know why. All right, why don't we hold it over there? It looks like they have to rebid their contract for um, maintenance. Yeah, grass well, cutting and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. According to the explanation. Yeah. Per contract, mm -hmm. three-year period. All right. Do you want an explanation on that? No. Charlie. No. So that finishes budgets. Weekly public discussion. Anybody here for weekly public discussion? Oh, let's talk about the water line on Chase Road. Okay. I don't really think it's a good idea. How you doing? I think it's going to cost the taxpayers a lot of money. What do you feel about that? What do you think we should do about it? Just build a new police station and uh, forget the water line? My personal opinion. I haven't heard any solid justification mm -hmm. for the water line at this point. Yeah, there is no solid justification. So, where do we take it from here? 
I also think you had a great idea of sending out mailers because everybody's getting scam calls today. So if you send out a mailer, people will read it. People don't want to answer the phone. They want to see it in writing in the mailbox. So I think that's a great idea. Very good. Okay, thank you. All right. <coughs> Next on the agenda, agenda is discussion of fire station one improvements. Where? We need improvements on fire station one, I take it. Right. We are aware that, that uh, fire engine cases will not fit into the bay station one. The only thing they can do is to design basically a smaller truck than what uh, would be appropriate. So with that in mind, uh, <clears throat> we talked to uh, Andy D. Giamo about possibly changing the arches or removing the arches, make a modification so a truck can fit in. Um, and we looked at it two Fridays ago with him, and he feels he can do something to uh, appropriately change the structure, still leave some type of a uh, archway of some nature, whether it's actually on the doors or over the door. Like a facade type of facade arch. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's an issue that we have to uh, you know, face because, like I said, basically the new, uh, new trucks will fit in to the station. And they really haven't been able to fit in probably 30 years after. No other truck can fit the station one other than Also met with uh, yeah. folks in the historical site, the historical commission, commission, commission. To make sure that um, they were okay with the idea. And basically, we don't we don't want to change the, the design of the building. Like, we just want to make the openings a little wider so the can fit through. I mean, you just we saw where the bricks are being hit, the trim boards are all smashed up because there's only this. You I mean, you you build this out there. You know how tight it is. You got to rig in and out so. Currently, can you fit any ambulance in Station 1? No. None of the ambulances we no, have? Yeah, okay. um, so how far are you going? Well, we're waiting for Andy to get back. Yeah, that'd be something. Yeah. So um, I did ask him uh, what he felt it was, what it cost him to modify it. He gave him a thumbnail uh, estimate of around 100000 <coughs> Uh, where are you on the replacement cycle of that, that engine? That's part of the next budget coming up. Yeah, so, 19 budget. 19 budget. We're on the 19 budget. Uh, 20 budget. 20 budget. Yeah. 19 budget. Next budget coming up. Right. So it's not in this budget here? It is not something yeah. Yeah. So you already have it in this budget for capital? Right. <coughs> you have what in the budget? The vehicle? To replace that. Okay. To replace it. Have you got bids? We got an estimate price of up to one hundred seventy-five thousand. Which way? Both ways, or just? That's for the uh, either commercial chassis. The custom will be a little more expensive. To specialize it to fit that on. Correct. Right. The but the uh, bid you have though is for that to go in that station. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a bid. It's just basically it's a, it's a quote from cool. a, a local big vendor who's been doing all our engines. Okay. You gave them the dimensions and all that, mm -hmm. and that fits. Can we um? Do we know how much is in the capital um, improvement capital building budget? From currently, uh, or um, I believe total. Yeah, that's what's been requested. So forty-five thousand is to do work at the highway barn, and twenty-five thousand is to do work at station two, fire station two, to do. <laughs> <laughs> Trim board, you wear and welcome out. Yeah, <laughs> we do the water line because of the fire choose. hydrant. <clears throat> if you were to put this in order of priority, the station one and two, which would be your priority first? Both. Yeah. I mean, station one, I mean, station two has no water when it gets cold. So it's tough to have a function in building up water. The hydrant's been out of service since 2015. 
so now we have to fuel, we have to get our water at Crossroad Commons, which in the time is spilled in the street and I get ice with, with traffic's going by. So I, they both need to be done. I mean, what would you estimate on that one? On fixing station two? That's the real, that's the, I guess, to put the water line down. Because right now, I think that's the water line was installed, it's too, too shallow. Too shallow. Mm -hmm. It gets cold, it freezes. Which creates all the kinds of problems within the side station. The plumbing and the boilers and that kind of stuff, so. So you, your total ask is 125, including station one and station two, at this point? At this, yeah, we're not really sure what's, what station one is going to be. I mean, in all honesty, the station town's two. overall plan should be to get station one moved to a better <coughs> location than where it is. But it's I feel like this is coming at us in, in all kinds of different angles right now, mm -hmm. and I feel like we've been really good about trying to see where we're going with our buildings, and I feel like this just kind of threw... Yeah. It's been really... It's, 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 been, <laughs> it's, never it's been, been in my it's, budget reports and probably since... But it's never been... I don't remember talking about it at the table, I guess, and I don't... Yeah. Right, I didn't think so. What we have discussed, you know, it's coming more to the forefront because it's time to replace that piece. So if we're going to spend an extra, I don't know for numbers, but thirty to forty thousand dollars to to fit a piece into that building, right? Maybe it's better money spent to fit the building, so we can put any piece into that building. And, yes, you know, a special remember, ordering. The, the thing we have to remember is right now, no no truck from Freetown nor anywhere else, right? Because last year you looked for one. Last year we tried to get a uh, right bottle <coughs> and, 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 and the truck went down. Last summer, the truck was down for like six weeks. There was no engine. One. Got it. But okay. we've had a capital building plan. plan account for years now, and it's never been on this plan. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we probably could have taken care of this well before now had it have had you have met with whomever, be the powers, not us, <coughs> um, and talked about this on the, for the building plan. Okay, but I think if you look at my do, budgets, I sent. He did the year you? before, the year before, but it's not in here, is what I'm saying. I just mentioned that it's going to be problematic for the new truck that's been next. Oh, so I guess I have, years ago I have an issue of why isn't it on here? Not an issue of bringing it forward, but just basically why is it not on here? Well, we didn't have a dollar amount at that no. point, and there hadn't been any discussions with anybody regarding uh, having someone take a look at the building and uh, determining how we uh, make the adjustments to it in terms of engineering costs and all construction costs. So I didn't have a number to put in at that point. Okay. It was just discussed in general mm -hmm. as part of the budget. It wasn't a, a solid number to put into the budget. Would this be yeah, part of the capital? Probably, and it still isn't a solid. We don't, we don't really know yet. So, Chief, when, when would delivery of a new piece of apparatus be if we... If it gets, you're not going to... If it gets approved at a town meeting, we're looking at probably this time next year. <clears throat> any other questions? No. Kim. Just one question. Is there any possibility to delay that piece of equipment a year to do the work on the building? Well, it's, uh, I'd rather not because that truck is on short of age. Okay. But, if, I mean, we have to, we, have to, we really, as an engineer, to say, this is what you can do. This is how long it's going to take. This is what's going to cost. Chief, did you say it would take a year to get the truck? Yeah, about a year. So if, if we approve the truck this year, it won't be on this budget anyway. Yes, it will. It'll, be, it'll get probably get delivered next, just next year. Order. Probably but the spring. You, you wouldn't have to pay for it until next year's budget, right? Well, we have to appropriate the money in order to order it. So right. it, they, the state needs First to know point. that we still have, we have money available. The first point, it would be, it's right. be upon the living. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? No. Right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Lucille, <coughs> you're up again. Thank you. Uh, this is for uh, organization of the Library Foundation. Mm -hmm. What are you looking to do? Well, um, a lot of times when there is a building project, especially coming up for a library, um, they will, somebody will set up a foundation into which you can deposit 
money that was donated or raised to put towards the building of the new library. So that's what I was hoping to get done. And I would contribute some money to start, start it off. Establishing a foundation. This is a general overview. It would involve the creation of a 401, 401c3. 503c3. 501c3. 501c3. Yeah. Non-profit corporation would need to be established, uh, have articles in the corporation, uh, be approved by the IRS to accept donations. Board of uh, Trustees. The articles would specify how the money could be spent as well as the membership of the trust. Were you able to get some help from the I, I actually was not able to do no. that. I just, uh, the number, it was specifically relating to campaign financing for some reason. I don't know why that page 91, I did take a look at it. Hmm. It, was, it didn't specify uh, the lawyer of the day as you suggested, so maybe I misread it, but mm. you know, that reference that you made was uh, for campaign financing. Rules and regulations relative to raising money and making sure that the money is spent <coughs> without influencing uh, the general population. Are you sure you were looking at page 91 yes. and not page 91? <laughs> it, oh, so right. even like the title page is considered page 1. And so it was 91 not, on the bottom, like I said, I saw the number there. Was yeah, you have to kind of look at the side where it, it tells you what page you're on. Well, I, I get all of this information out of that okay. handout. Okay, so. all right. It's going to be a separate organization but, than the Friends, I guess. Yes, that, that yes, definitely a separate <coughs> organization from the Friends. So where, where is this? Is this from the Library Planning Committee? Is this from the Library Committee? Like where, I guess I'm confused. Who's starting it? Me. Yes. The, so who's on the Library Planning Committee? Um, we've got five or six people on the okay. planning committee. Okay. Yeah. So they are the ones that voted and brought this forward? No. Okay. <clears throat> I just offered to start it off with some money. Okay. And I don't know how to put it in place. So we'd have to start a foundation to begin with, right? Now yeah. That we could just do donation, a donation account for the purpose of building the office. And where would, you, where would that be deposited? It would just be a se special revenue fund like any other type of donation, right. and the board of selectmen would determine what the um, the spending plan would be, which is obviously to build a new library, I believe, based on what Lucille said, and it's spent without any further appropriation. We don't need a separate organization to do that. So, Kim, yeah. would it be similar to what they have for cemeteries? Now, would it be in the town or would it be a separate? That it would just be a donation account, which would be a special revenue. It's not a trust fund. Right. Um, you could stipulate if anybody donated to that, um, that any interest for that fund could be retained with the fund, because typically donations don't keep their, their, their interest income. Um, that would be an option. If we did not make it a foundation, would donors still be able to claim their donation? Yeah, because we're an exempt organization, yeah. so we can provide them with a, you know, a deduction notification for their tax return. Okay. I'm not my, myself knowledgeable about what the benefit of one versus the other is. Um, so well, the foundation controls its own money. The donations would be controlled by the town treasurer. So why don't we do some more homework and find okay. out which is the better way to go? Can we? Did we do something like that with the K-9 fund? That we set up a donation account for the K-9 right. fund, so anybody can donate to the K-9 fund and would go. We set it up so it would specifically go to help maintain the dog and Correct. anything the dog needs. Mm -hmm. I have a question. What I missed. You want to build a new library? 
Is that correct? Yes. And, and how much is the new library going to cost? Well, um, if you're talking about how much it's going to cost the town, it could no, be in total. total. Depends on how big of a facility we we uh, put up, but it could be as much as ten million. It could be fifteen million. A lot depends on what we want to put in it, and the state, if we are able to fulfill the state's requirements, they are paying up to 50% of the building cost um, if you are given a construction grant. And that's what we would be aiming for. Okay. And, and, the, and the other 50%, we're looking to get that through donations? Through the, well, whatever, uh, whatever we can get through donations, yes, but then the rest would come from the town. As, as far as the town, we have not set anything in stone about building any other buildings right at this point. We've had a feasibility study done. Feasibility study came back that there was places of need, the police station being one of them, the COA, the library, the <coughs> town hall being all areas of need. Right. The selectmen activated the building committee. They got together, took a vote, and the first building that they wanted to try to build would be the police station. Um, after that, of need and where we are, and there's, as Louis, uh, Lucia was saying, there's a bid cycle that goes with the library. So every so many years, that bid comes, that cycle comes up, and the grant money, the 50% grant money comes available. So the board, we just missed the last one, the one that just happened. So it won't be for another what's five years, 2022 or something. The next time we even have a yeah. bid cycle. Yeah. So wouldn't it be, it'd be a while before it. Like that I mean, they can abortion. happen any time. It depends on when the state has money to mm -hmm. give to that kind of uh, an enterprise. But um, we have to be ready whenever it does come. And although the, the town hasn't specifically voted for a new library building, I hate to say this, in 2001, the town did vote to contribute $15,000 towards the planning and design of a new library. So that was a certain amount of consent that we do need a new library, mm -hmm. even though that vote wasn't to fund the actual building, it was a, um, an acknowledgement that, yes, we do need a new library. So and did we do that? Excuse me? Did we use that $15,000? No, no, because um, we have to put certain things in place, and at this point in time, it's what, 17 years later, mm -hmm. um, now there are additional requirements and we've got to go looking for more money. The money that we had at the time would have done it in 2001, but now it, it's not enough money anymore. So we need to get more money mm -hmm. in order to complete the planning and design phase, and only when that is complete can we then um, request grant funding for construction. If they came and said, well, you know, surprise, there's going to be another uh, grant round in uh, 2019, at this moment we could not apply for it because we have not completed planning and design. So that's what we've got to do next. Okay. All right. So, do you want to sit down with Kim and yeah. go over it and figure out mm -hmm. how you want to do it? Yes. Perfect. That, that makes sense. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Too. Next is ambulance abatements, I believe. Off my agenda here. <coughs> Eminent Statements, Town of Freetown, for March 20, March 2018, an amount of 57,523.61. Write-offs for the period end March 2018 have been made specific attached. Scheduled from Coimstar in the aggregate amount of $15,173.01 for a total of $72,696.62. Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Motion made and seconding. Discussion on the motion. Hearing on all in favor? Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda is we did the transfer of funds already. 
County Administrator Paul. <coughs> I just want to update the board uh, that I have received correspondence from the attorney representing uh, the Catholic Diocese regarding Boat Road, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they have uh, made a uh, proposal to the town to uh, sell that parcel of land that's adjacent to uh, the fire station on Bullock Road. Um, I talked to council about it regarding how we go about acquiring it. Uh, there is, the, t the board will need to make what they call a uniqueness determination, uh, which basically says that it's a unique situation that is going to benefit the town via the fact that it's adjacent to uh, the fire station and can be used for expansion purposes and the like. Uh, and then we'll need to uh, uh, have an article uh, to purchase uh, the land as well as appropriate funds for uh, the purpose of uh, purchasing that parcel. Okay. So I'm working on that. We've been working with D, uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation regarding the proprietor's way, uh, getting information to them uh, to, trans to basically conclude the transaction uh, that was approved at the last special town meeting uh, to affect the sale of that land uh, to DCR. What is DCR, uh, please? Uh, DCI is the Department of Conservation and Recreation. It's proprietor's way. There's a, there's a huge parcel of land behind it uh, that they're purchasing for private parties. And those private parties, uh, it, the whole sale of this piece of land, which is basically frontage, which would be a parking lot, and provide access to the back parcels of land. Um, and it's all being uh, uh, basically done through a grant. So they needed this piece in order to um, allow uh, the other parts of the, of the project to fall together. Is and they're buying the land from the state. The, the state, state is buying it. Yeah, the conservation. It'll be, con it'll be conservation is going to transfer some land over. They're buying independent parcels of land from private parties, and then they're buying this piece from us to go through the parking lot and to have an entryway into uh, into the uh, area behind it. So it'll be a park. Or yeah, it's just like hiking trails and things like. It's a beautiful piece of uh, land, according to ECR. They said that you know uh, it's very unique in terms of the geology and geography. So they're uh, very happy to be able to get that. Uh, I did uh, the town, I should say, did host the uh, South Coast Managers meeting. Uh, we had 13 representatives, town administrators, town managers, uh, last uh, Wednesday, uh, and it was hosted at Air Gas. Uh, they're very gracious to let us use this space. Uh, the meeting was successful, and then, uh, it was a, a good meeting from the perspective that you know everybody was able to sit around the table and basically have a roundtable discussion about issues that are affecting all of our communities. Uh, I did get a request uh, from the police to uh, begin bargaining. Uh, the date that they've thrown out is May 16, 2018, uh, and I'd like to get back to them that date is already. I believe that Joe's going to be out that date and also. What day would you say? Wednesday. And what time do you uh, I don't have is the time, you? but I can, I can get that by it. Actually, there is nobody assigned. Oh. I'm doing dispatch, you're doing signal operations. I thought you were doing both. Uh, yeah, why don't we see if we can do it? <laughs> well, the way we've been operating, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You have five. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, see what time they want to do it. See if we can do it later in the day. Awesome. Okay, later in the day. Currently, I'm doing 16. <clears throat> okay. um, I did have a meeting today with the Greater Attleboro Taunton Housing Consortium. Uh, basically regarding the Freetown screw site and just running through them some different ideas as to, because they're familiar with that type of uh, development and although they can't participate in the, in the development of the parcel itself, uh, we did uh, explore some ideas as to how we can develop the land from their experience of developing similar portions of C 
similar types of projects. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to try to put together a working group uh, made up of uh, conservation, uh, myself, uh, the other interested parties that might be interested in seeing uh, ways that we could uh, develop uh, that parcel of land, either as housing or maybe potentially other options that uh, might be available and discussed. I thought that that property was specific for senior housing. All right. So you might want to check into that before you go down an avenue that you might oh, all right. want to well, back I, I, know, I know that the board did um, specify that to me when it was given to me as a goal. In the, in the uh, I want to say in, in the um, pr um, project um, report that was generated as a ransom, they just specified a number of units. I didn't, I didn't notice yeah, it it's, that Yeah, it's for senior housing because um, the CERTA is right on that route, <coughs> so okay. um, busing. Um, so okay. I think that the specific reason for that was for senior housing. So right, okay. I wouldn't want to stray too far from that. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, on that senior housing, where, where would that be? Uh, the Freetown, old Freetown screw site, which is um, that County down, Road, right? yeah, County Road. There's, there's still a lot of things that need to be done <coughs> prior to yeah. even getting to that point. <coughs> Looking at it in terms of does the town want to look at the project as being the lands out there, we'll give it to a developer to develop and uh, have them hold the project in uh, the units as senior housing in perpetuity or some designated period of time. Uh, do you want to develop single family units uh, or multi family units? There's a whole bunch of considerations that could be had uh, and made. Uh, right now, according to the project report, there, there isn't enough land uh, to do the project in terms of uh, there's a lot of mention in the report about tax credits and whether just the one piece without pushing it sufficient to make it viable as a, a project for any developer. So there's a whole bunch of obstacles that still need to be done. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I think that we're going to take a, a hard look at how we can actually get the, the project in the way and get it going. And, and you need to look at, sorry, go ahead. Uh, you need to still look at um, a cushion it and whatever we wanted to do with them as well. So we also want to make sure that if it's a brown Brownfield site that we're not going to get, um, we're not going to take that over and then all of a sudden find out that that's what it is. And okay. so I think that turning carefully and um, and pursuing it with conservation and also the state um, probably is a, is a good way to go. You might want to reach out to planning too. They were yeah. working on a proposal to do some 55 and over development um, and um, some density. They're looking at doing some density studies over there. Well, actually, one, so, of, the, one of the things in the report, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, ahead, no. uh, is that it states that because of the zoning use over there, they, they can't develop the type of housing, the uh, senior housing project, because it's not zoned, it's zoned for right. general use. So that would be part of talking to planning. Also, um, <coughs> we were, they were talking about doing some 40B, um, possible 40B with we that, too. That today, too. So, 55 and over 40B would be perfect for that facility, that area. All right. Get some ideas. Okay. Anything uh, else? Just one that? final thing. Yeah. Um, the Greater Attleboro Town Home Consortium, they're coming in the next meeting. Uh, I wanted to have them a, a, a while back. Uh, they just want to provide an overview of the housing rehab program and the first time home buyers assistance program. They find that by doing it on the cable and the people watching it, they have a better response in, in terms of uh, returns on uh, people expressing interest in those programs. We did have two sessions. Uh, there weren't a lot of people there for that and didn't generate any interest uh, to do either program. But the feeling is, is that we can get, just continue to get the word out there that both of those programs are great programs for low to moderate income individuals to get their housing, houses rehabbed. Uh, and uh, a lot of them are. Uh, loans that don't need to be repaid until the house is sold or transferred to another party. So for an elder or a senior person who needs a new heating system or a new roof, it's a perfect program because they give fifteen, twenty thousand dollars and then, you know, at some point in the future they have to pay it off. But there's not that constant outlay every month after month after month. Yeah. That's it for me. All right. Board of Health, do you have anything from the Board of Health? No. Board of Personnel Board, Charlie? Yes. Uh, first up, I 
have a letter of resignation from Sarah Gilbert as senior clerk for the Council on Aging, effective April 12th, 2018. Um, would you want me to read the letter into the record? Please. Uh, to Barbara Place, Director of Council on Aging, 227 Chase Road, Freetown, Mass. Uh, dear Barbara, please accept this letter as my formal resignation for my role as senior clerk. My last date of employment will be on April 12th, 2018. This has been a very difficult decision to make. Unfortunately, due to personal reasons, I believe that it is, a, it is necessary at this time. I would like to take the opportunity to extend my gratitude for the knowledge and experience I have gained during my time at the Council on Aging. Sincerely, Sarah Gilbert. Make a motion to accept with regret. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being no discussion, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we, we know when they're going to post this? I don't know. <coughs> okay. Can we send a letter to her thanking her for service of the time? And can you just reach out to um, COA and find out when they're going to post this? Okay, we're going to be discussing the job description at their next meeting, I guess. Okay, thanks. Shirley, you might want to be on, in with that. Yeah. Uh, I also have a letter of resignation from the Council on Aging, aging Board Member Edward Medeiros, uh, effective April uh, 3rd of this year. And the letter is addressed to uh, Jeanette, Jeanette uh, Tisdale, Chairperson, Freetown Council on Aging. Uh, <clears throat> I am resigning my position on the Freetown Council on Aging Board effective immediately. It has been a pleasure working with such wonderful and caring people with a passion for helping the senior community of Freetown. There has been many changes since I joined the board, and I see many more to come. Continue the good work that you do. Sign A with Jamie Tiris. Make a motion to accept with regrets. Second. Uh, motion seconded, made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Again, you send a letter. And the third item is um, a letter um, asking that we name David as our SERPED uh, or commissioner, effective um, as immediately for one year. Actually, I want to clarify that because uh, it, it's, it was missing one word in the description. It's not to be the, the serpent representative, it's for uh, to serve on the nominating committee. And I guess it's just to attend one meeting in that capacity, serving on behalf of the board. If there's a board member that's interested in doing that, I'd, you know, I'd have no problem relinqu relinquishing that. But uh, when I, the email that I had gotten um, was from Jeff, uh, who's the director of SERPED, uh, it says, I'm conferring with Serpent Chair Deborah Milano on our, I'm writing to inquire if you have an availability to serve per the bylaws as a selectman appointed conservation commission member on the nominating committee this year. It said it's just one, that's a one meeting um, thing that happens in, in May. So it's not to be served as the uh, as designated. I believe I'm already designated just for that under us. Uh, I'll make a motion to appoint David to the commission as a commission member for the nominating committee this year. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We've got mail. <laughs> We've discussed the the dates of the upcoming meetings. Um, this time, <coughs> I'd like to enter into executive session. Um, for, by Mass General Law Section Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation to, for contract negotiations with non union personnel, Police Chief Colin E. Abbott, Jr. For Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Town Hall, Library, Union, Highway Union, 
Freetown Firefighters Union, Signal Operators, and Freetown Police Union and Educators Associations of Freetown because an open meeting law may have detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares. Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21.3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigation of the position of a public body and the chair so declares for XL Recycling LLC versus the Town of Freetown <coughs> and to open to return into open session. Um, question. Are we um are we going to are you talking about the Educators Association in tonight? Because if you are, I'm going to recuse myself. I don't believe we are. Okay. Um, if no, we, there hasn't been an update on the school since the last session. If we do, though, you can reassure yourself at that point. Okay. Thank and you. the minutes will, will still reflect. Okay. I'll bring up one more thing before you go into executive session. Sure. Uh, I request that a meeting with the Board of Selectmen to discuss the water line. Okay. And I don't know if you can schedule that because I really would like to get some feedback from the Board uh, before we vote on that. You have you put it into the office already? I, I did make a phone call okay. and requesting it, and I was told that uh, you guys did not have time for that. Right now we don't because of all the budget stuff we're doing, but as soon as this okay. clears up in May, we should be we should be able to get on the agenda. Well, we have, we have the, the town meeting in June. We're going to be voting on it. Yeah, so sure. if we if we don't do it before, so well, we definitely need, we'll do it before. And um, there's going to be... Two, uh, <coughs> David was looking at the calendar today to um, have two informational meetings um, um, for the community as well. On, on the waterline. Water yes. Oh, okay. No, I was not aware uh, the of date, that. When, when's the dates and times for that? I just said yeah, we haven't, we haven't determined that, that David was looking at the calendar today, wanted to make sure that we didn't have any other meetings coming up, so tomorrow he should have so a better as idea. Of, as of now, there's no informational meetings. So will be tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Afternoon time or something? Yep. Okay. And we're going to have this meeting that he's talking about not 10 minutes before June 4th. We're going to have it weeks, weeks before June 4th, correct? It'll be at a selectman's meeting. I mean, it's only fair to the taxpayers. If he, would, if he wants to be on a selectman's agenda, it'll be at a selectman's meeting. Yeah, that's fine. And have it at a decent time, like 7 o'clock, so all the it'll be a, We have a selectman meeting at 6 p.m. Oh, that's fine. Um. First and third Tuesday, uh, first and third Mondays of the month, except for after holidays, we follow, go the following Tuesday. That's why we're here today. And we have a one one other issue I want to uh, <coughs> get some feedback on. We we have some questions on legality of the uh, finance committee, what their role is, what 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 is the legal ramifications of uh, some of our bylaws, and I'm not too sure exactly how to approach that. I've asked for clarification on one particular item that we still haven't gotten any feedback from. Why hasn't that been sent to you? It has been sent to him. Oh, sure. It has been sent to you. Okay. Oh, it has been sent to him. No, no. Is it going to town council? It, it went into town council, yeah. Have we got a reply from town council? I don't recall getting a reply. Yeah, wait, there, there's a, this was the first one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, what, a, what, that's, a re, what a report was. Yes, that has already been, Ali was, somebody I, was supposed to send it, so. I haven't seen a copy of it. Yeah. So can we make sure he gets a copy of the mm -hmm. town council's report? That was a while ago, George. You're right. So, uh, I haven't got any either, so it's yeah. not just you. Uh, all right, so I can expect that. Okay. Um, and how would you suggest we proceed? It doesn't have to be before the town meeting, but for, for next year. We, we have a, a number of questions based on the bylaws as to what our responsibility is and how to carry it out. And um, whatever you have, put in, put in, put in, put in ready. Give it to. There's, there's a form to well, fill out. I, I, right, I, I provided you with the form. That well, that's the one I filled out for you for that one. For the, ne for the next yeah. question, for what? Right. Put it, put it on, put it in writing. Right. What you want from the town council, we can send it over and get. Okay. Have the town council respond to it. Right. That way you can clarify anything in your own mind, what you need to know. You need to put it in, just put it in writing in terms of what your concerns are. Okay. And I, and I, I think that, um, just personally speaking, on when we do the special town meeting in October, it's not as crazy as the annual town meeting, so there may be some time, since they're already coming down here, 
that if you could set aside a certain, like 15 minutes to sit down and talk to you, I, I mean, that would be fine too, because it's already going to be here. Right. Um, but that won't be till the fall. Well, that might be okay. Okay. You could actually have your whole board sit with them. And yeah. Right. That's your board will be there. He'll be there. And then yeah. you can have they a face-to-face -face conversation without, you know, email and going back and forth. He'll be right there. So that might be an easier way to go. But that won't be till fall. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Not a rush. All right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Do we have a motion with the executive session? Yeah, we did. I didn't hear a motion or a second. I'll make the motion. I second. Motion made and seconding discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All the members, Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Chico? Yes. Mr. Jones, yes. We're back from executive session, and we have one last thing that was uh, overlooked on the agenda. We will be taking care of that now. Um, David, do you have that in front of you? Uh, yes. Uh, that is uh, a town of Freetown indirect cost allocation plan for the water and sewer enterprise account. Uh, this has been put together by <coughs> the town accountant. Uh, basically, it amend, uh, it doesn't amend or alter the original update plan, except for the following provision. It is the intent of the, of the Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners to seek financial subsidy from the general fund for all engineering costs related to the East Freetown system model provided by Environmental Partners Group. These costs for financial statement reporting must be reflected in the enterprise fund. However, that does not limit the use of a financial subsidy to offset these charges. The subsidy will reduce the amount of funds transferred for indirect costs allocated under the indirect cost allocation plan for the water sewer enterprise. And they're asking uh, both the board and the water commissioners to endorse. Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Motion made and second to approve. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.